Last year we started a new tradition, namely having a, a reception after the prize ceremony. Uh, the highlight of this reception is an interview with the uh, uh, Abel Prize laureate. The venue is new. This year we uh, uh, are at Krokost Kjellern. The winner is new. This year it's uh, Hende Semeredi. But the host of the interview is the same, Tonja Steinsland, prize winning uh, journalist from TV2. And she is now going to interview Hende Semeredi. Please, Tonja. Thank you. And the Semeredi, congratulations for the Thank you very much. Prize. Thank you. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, most probably better outside. There is a famous article written about you by some of your colleagues, and it's called An Irregular Mind. And it claims that you somehow, your brain is wired up differently than many, many others. And you are able to see patterns, order, where yeah. everybody else just see, seem to see chaos. Yeah, I know the, actually, uh, the title of the book is The Most Important Things. And then what is in the book, most probably can be ignored. So, <laughs> yes, I know that there was a book where the title was Irregular Mind. Actually, I objected it because I don't think so. I have an irregular mind. You don't think so? No, no, I don't, I don't think so. But also, I heard some story. I don't remember that there was a very good book, but there was no title. And then uh, the friend asked, uh, the writer asked the friend, then what is in the book? What is not in the book? And like, uh, there was no guitar or symbolum or something. So then the title was, uh, a book without uh, um, guitar and uh, what is this? Drum. And drum. Mm, so but yet, you are able to spot patterns where everybody else seems to see just chaos. What is this ability that you have? How would you describe it? What is it all about? Maybe there are some, many others can see an order in the chaos, but they, are my, they just don't write it up. Uh, and I write it up. I am not sure that it is only me who can They don't see write it, it up? Uh, no, no, they ra don't write it up. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I write it up I in necessity, as you have to write always papers and... Uh, mm, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> but how do you go about then, when you work on these problems? How do you do it? If I knew that I would give you a precise answer... <laughs> <laughs> But the, the point is that you start, uh, I, I always choose a problem which I like without, uh, of course, sometimes uh, you choose a problem which is famous because all of us have some ambition and then like to solve something uh, uh, important or if you are actor, you of course wants to have the main uh, 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 part, the main uh, role and uh, but uh, most of the time I choose the problems which I like. Uh, and what and makes you like them? <laughs> 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 well, I could ask a question then, then, then uh, if you ask a boy, uh, what makes them like this girl and not the other one? So, <laughs> what makes me like? I just like uh, one of the, some of the problems. Uh, and, and if you work on mathematics or in any other subjects, the sooner or later you just acquire some taste, which is your own taste, and then according to your taste or judgment, you decide then you like this problem or you don't like this problem. Actually, tell you the truth, sometimes we write papers about problems which we don't like, but we have to produce papers, of course. <laughs> <laughs> We are constantly told that great achievements requires an early start. If you want to become something in life, you have to start from this young and uh, continuous hard work, that is the key. But mm. when you were a child, you were just fooling around in Budapest playing soccer and were just an ordinary boy. Yeah. And at 21, you were working in a factory manufacturing vacuum cleaners. <laughs> no well. Arbel Price in sight at that time? No, I was already sure that the end of the story. <laughs> 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 well, it was just 
prefer to hide the real intention. But no, actually, uh, be serious. Uh, I never wanted to be a mathematician. I wanted to be a soccer player, but I was too short. So after I was 14, I was thrown out of the, the team because we had to play with, uh, uh, with uh, teams where 17 years old players so which were physically much stronger. So that was the end of my soccer career. And my uh, father wanted me to go to the medical school to be a doctor. And then I usually obeyed the rules. And this was one of these occasions, but somehow I dropped out. Uh, and then I started later because of, of these things. And uh, actually, maybe I shouldn't say this, but uh, uh, study mathematics on some level, elementary level in elementary school was a necessary uh, thing for me because um, I was very weak. And then I was grown up in uh, boarding schools and I was the weakest in the class. And so I had to find an ally. And for my, uh, I was very lucky because the strongest guy in the class was an, the strongest boy otherwise. So I uh, wrote him the homework uh, and then of course helped <laughs> to st in the exams and then in exchange, of course, he protected, he, he protected me. So out of necessity. <laughs> It happens, it's not a singular case. It, it's a very natural... Uh, and yet, uh, I was also told that you met this schoolmate of yours who actually gave you this advice to right, go and study right. mathematics. It yes. was a coincidence. But you also took his advice because he was taller than you that, and he that, was, you were looking up that, to him. That's true. I have a governing uh, principle. Then who is at least 30 centimeters taller than me should be right, regardless, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> He says, and then he was 30 centimeters taller. Actually, I, I, I met at that moment by chance because uh, actually he was well received by the girls, uh, if, if you understand what I mean. And, but, but then he was 15 year, minutes late, uh, so he, sees, uh, he, he stood there, but the girl left already because, well, most probably the girl was 175, so he could find another one. 190, so I just ran, ran into him and then we started a conversation and then he persuaded me that my right place uh, is not where I was at that point. So, you see, luck is really important. Uh, I see. <laughs> when you were 27, you had been studying mathematics for a few years then. You right. applied to go to Moscow. Yes. To study uh, with your hero, math professor Gell Font. Right. But you actually fill in the application form wrong, and you applied to go to Gell Font, yes, who was a quite a different professor in Moscow. That's true. It tells a lot of, um, about me. <laughs> <laughs> and you were accepted as Gell Font's student, but he was doing topology and geometry and things that... Well, you, you know it better than me because I didn't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yet you stayed with him for two years. Well, is, uh, okay, so the real story is that yes, I made a mistake, but uh, at that time in Hungary, the system was very strict. So I applied for uh, candidacy, which means then you spend two or three years uh, under some supervision. Uh, and uh, usually you don't uh, stop you actually really work these two or three years. So I went there and I, of course, immediately realized that Gell Fund uh, is a different kind. They, they had a very high level mathematician like Margulis, Kardan, uh, uh, his son uh, uh, was his student and they were 20. I was already at that time 27. And our first conversation started, he asked my age, and then when I told him, I looked a little bit youngish, I have to tell you, I, I don't want to say I look younger now, but uh, <laughs> maybe because of things, it makes things worse. So um, he told me then, okay, you are, it's, you are too old, uh, you should look for another pro profession. But he didn't tell me which one, so. <laughs> so you just stayed. <laughs> Well, how would you describe yourself as a student? Sorry? What kind of a student were you? How would you describe but yourself? But in the high school, I was a good student because uh, I 
studied the material from day to day, so I was a very good student in that sense, but I, I never deeply studied anything except biology because I wanted to go to the medical school. So you didn't ex work like constantly eight hours a day studying mathematics at that level? You no, not in the high school, neither in Moscow because I studied 10 minutes and I realized that I don't understand. And uh, <coughs> the thing, so I wanted really to change to Gelfond and to my uh, big surprise, there was a, I was lucky because there was a conference in Hungary while I was still in my first year and Gelfond came and they assigned me as a Russian speaking uh, student. Now you can judge that I have spent about 20 years in, 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 in US and still my English actually can be improved, but at that <laughs> my Russian was uh, all right. But that was not the language what was important because uh, he had the assignment that he had to buy clothes and shoes and this kind of things for his wife and uh, for his two daughters. He couldn't get the shoes back in Moscow, so he wanted yeah, to buy it in uh, that, that, That's true, yes, he couldn't get, and then uh, I knew how to move around in Budapest, so we became a kind of uh, acquainted, not a friend, and then he told me that if I wanted, I could go to him and then study numbers here, which uh, I believe that I could have studied because it's much more concrete and it was much closer to my taste and to my experience. Uh, but unfortunately, in after two months, he died of heart attack, so I had to stay with Gelfand. I was uh, covered enough not to stop and go home because it's a little bit shameful that you, uh, you stop at halfway. And, so, and Gelfand uh, agreed that uh, I can do whatever I want, meaning that I can write a dissertation from combinatorics. And I remember that I had to pass an exam and Gelfand was very famous that in every, well, not only as a mathematician, but he has this Gelfand seminar where all these big shots were there. Uh, there are a lot of mathematicians here, so they know all Manin, Anson, Anson Arnold, uh, all Anson, the big ones. And then I had to present one of my results, uh, that was the rule, uh, and uh, just to getting the degree. And then I started, uh, and then in 10 minutes, one, uh, one of these big ones uh, came to the board, erased, and gave a short proof. And then uh, another one gave. Uh, I, I told him, okay, maybe this is not enough time, then I can judge your solution. It looks elegant, but maybe there is a hole in it. So, <laughs> of course, I didn't want to tell me then it's, it, it's plain stupid. I mean, you really have to be mm, polite uh, toward these great mathematicians. And then the next one came, and the next one came, next one, of all of the solutions were, I were two, uh, two years on the, on the problem, they were, of course, much cleverer, but had a little bit less experience in combinatorics. So all of them solutions were good, but still they had the self-confidence to go to the board, solving in 10 minutes a problem. So you see, this is some of the things that discrete okay. mathematics at that time was not considered to be part of mathematics because all these guys uh, believe that in 10 minutes you can. <laughs> you are one of very few people in the world, I believe, who actually have made an abstract vision of the structure of the internet. And your famous regularity lemma has been a great inspiration to scientists within the field of theoretical computer science. How do you feel about computers yourself? Well, well, uh, I don't mind if there is a computer in the room. <laughs> <laughs> because you are not using the internet yourself, are you? Huh? You're not using the internet. You're not well, using the internet yourself. I, don't, I can tell you what I use. Uh, I can switch on the computer and then uh, I read the news, uh, mostly the sport news. <laughs> well, I, uh, but otherwise, uh, it's not a secret uh, because almost everybody whom I know and they are my friends know that 
if they really want an answer, then they write to Anna, to my wife, and then she answers the... And your mail system, uh, the, the, managed the, by your wife. The mail system, so... And it is not risky, she is reliable, she knows that what to answer. <laughs> <laughs> and you also have a problem operating a simple snapshot camera, is that true? You don't... Right, okay, give me one and then I will try. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, what, what no, no. About, what about ah, I never took a picture. What about remote controls, like the, rem the remote controls, like the remote for your DVD player at home? Is it true uh, that you invite uh, that, your that, grandchildren over to? That is the problem to? that. Uh, so I, when we usually watch uh, with Anna a movie, you watch night, a movie, but then it is on DVD, and then if she forgot to switch it back to the computer. The next day I cannot watch maybe the Italian Open uh, Tennis uh, <laughs> Championship because I don't know how to switch it back. Uh, but I will learn it. Uh, if you give me some I time, so. yes, I will. I, I have to. I mean, it's necessity. But how do you describe this? You have this wonderful gift of this visualizing this abstract world. And apparently you have problems with the concrete world, like... Children are operating snapshot cameras and DVD well, players. I have a, a lot of problems with many other things, so <laughs> 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 I wouldn't sing loud this <laughs> one. But, uh, but, but I, I will try to learn what I, I really have to learn, and I am pretty sure that I, in a three months course I will be able to learn how to switch back all these <laughs> things. <laughs> well, if we go back to what you're actually very good at, searching for and finding patterns in, in what seems yes. like chaos, what are the happiest moments in your life as a mathematician? As, as for every mathematician, so if you work on something uh, quite a lot of time and then you find the solution, then you are happy, then you, you have the feeling that you did something. Uh, it, it happens very rarely, at least for me. Uh, I work a lot and very slowly. Uh, and then finally when I get the result, yes, I am happy. Uh, but uh, if you at the same day there is a soccer play and like my favorite team Barcelona loses, then I, I have a very mixed uh, emotion. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> well, finding, finding patterns in, in chaos, is there also for you, and maybe this is a difficult question, but is there also a kind of existential dimension to this? Do you sometimes have a feeling that you are discovering something greater, a system of, a divine system or a, a spirit of order in the world or something? No, I just solve a problem, but uh, I am very much uh, a, a person, uh, how you say it in English, uh, on the earth. I, I don't uh, uh, go that far that I discovered something which says about something the universe. I, I leave it up to the philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, uh, to, without any joke, uh, the so-called regularity lemma is not a mathematical statement, this is more a philosophical statement, uh, more a um, way of looking at things, and, and, and then you really, there is a cause, then you can break it into some pieces where, where you safely can do something. Would you describe yourself as a spiritual person? Sorry? Are you a spiritual person? When you look, look up at the sky at, the, at night? You're, uh, you're at night, yes, that's the difference. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know too much about me because I cannot sleep, so I really have to take sleeping pill, but e you know, sleeping pills, but even that I sometimes wake up, I go to the terrace and I look up and then I really feel some spirituality. I, you look at the moon, the stars, and so it's an infinity. Uh, and the life itself is very mystical thing, so to some extent, yes, I believe in spiritual things. <laughs> Though I am not a religious uh, person, but uh, in more general sense, yes, uh, I feel some spirituality I in agree. the world. Life is a mystery. It has been a joy and an honor talking to you, Andres Emeredi. Thank you very and much. It was even better for me to talk to you, and it's a very <laughs> great honor. <laughs>
so much. Thank you. Thank you.